Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast for another podcast episode. In today's episode, we talk a little bit about the heavyweight division again, in particular to Andy Ruiz and our theories of his possible gang affiliations. We dabbled with what's going on with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. We chat a little bit about the new hotbed of professional sports, which is Saudi Arabia at the moment, uh, plus much more. Uh, it was a good episode today that went over a bunch of different topics uh, in boxing, so we guys got you covered. All right, so sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast episode. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. It means a lot to us. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the show. So who are you taking in this weekend's fights? I know who I got, and it's not who you think. So I'm going to take my picks over to the world's safest and most trusted online gambling site and make a few bets. That's right, it's BetDSI.com. With more than 20 years' experience in the online gaming industry, BetDSI has the best sign-up and deposit promotions on the web. They also boast more deposit options than any other betting site, including fast, free, and secure payouts. Also, for our listeners, they are offering a special promotion where you can build a bigger bankroll and get 100% sports cash bonus. When using our promo code, Fighters Corner, all one word, that's 50% more sports cash by using our promo code, Fighters Corner. Check out BetDSI for all your online gaming needs. This episode is sponsored by B2 Digital. B2 Digital is doing some really cool things in the mixed martial art world. They're kind of creating a farm league for the uh, bigger shows. And they are listed on a publicly traded company, listed on a stock exchange, BTDG on the stock exchange. Um, They support our show. Guys, please, please, if you guys like this show, please give them a look. And if you can throw some support their way, man, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like, share, all because you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Radio Player, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, and the guy sitting next to you on the train is probably listening to us too. And if you can, show us your support by finding us on Patreon, where you can let us know how much you love us. And if you're a fan of boxing, jiu-jitsu, kumite, and even capoeira, go check out my guys at UCL MMA. These guys are the heavyweight champions of mixed martial arts shows. And if you think you're the next Johnny Lawrence, go to their website at uclmma.com, shoot them an email, and tell them John sent you before asking their matchmaker that you want to defend your All-Valley Karate Championship versus one of their fighters. That's uclmma.com. Welcome back to the Fighters Corner, John Goroski, Miguel Odorate, and we are covering boxing. Miguel, what are our topics for uh, tonight's show? Well, um, hold on one quick second here, because in, in terms of boxing, I guess the big news in boxing is that the big three, the all three heavyweights are signed to fight before the end of the year, and just like at the beginning of the year, none of them are fighting each other, um, but you've got... And September 14th, hosting Tyson Fury and uh, Otto Wallen in Vegas. And then you've got the Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz fight. And then we're capped by Andy Ruiz and uh, Anthony Joshua in the desert of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Is, is that like. official yet or no? Yeah, um, we're we're going to start with the juiciest one out of the three, which is obviously the Ruiz and the Joshua fight. Sure. And, um, you know, um, and the only is acting as if it's official. And he, like we've stated here several times on the Fighters Corner podcast, um, you know, it would behoove a guy like Eddie Hearn in his position in boxing to have some type of, you know, clever rematch clause, you know, in, in, in the contract, you know? Well, clever, and, um, yeah, so, he, he, I mean, he's clever enough to, you know, get a guy that fails a drug test to fight the night of an event, but, it, you know, Andy Ruiz doesn't really seem to be, have any, like, bend in regards to this, for some reason, like he's uh... well, he's, like going to England, you know, is is definitely something that would be an advantage to Joshua. So I can see why Ruiz wants to play coy with that. Now, then, what Hearn does is he goes off, and you know, Saudi Arabia is an entity in boxing. They recently hosted the Amir Khan fight, and you know, we know there's money there, there's and that's what Hearn sniffed out, and he didn't really care, you know, about any of the other bells and whistles. He's got another venue. The word is is that. Uh, uh, you know, Andy Ruiz made clear $9 million for the fight. The problem is, is that's about 25% of, of the estimated $25 million or so that he socked away for Joshua, which, you know, I mean, 
Dude, I don't know what happened to the champion's 50-50 split, you know? Well, he got $9 million, but Luis Ortiz turned down $6 million for it. Yeah. That's kind of... You know, where does that figure come from? Because I think... He, I, I, I thought Ruiz jumped at the six. Well, the thing about Ortiz that you have to realize now, in retrospect, is... Um, you know, he always, he probably always had this um, Deontay Wilder fight kind of, um, you know, in the works kind of thing. Um, now, I don't think his payday is going to be the same, but um, he definitely must look at that as a winnable fight based on the last time. And it may be something that, you know, stuck in his craw and he wants to do there. But keep in mind, when he turned down that fight, it was shortly afterwards that Wilder said, hey, uh, me and him are going to do it again. You know, I've I've been looking into it, and like Saudi Arabia has actually been a hotbed for like big time sports. Like, well, they, like they WWE had, is WWE is going there a lot. There. Uh, they had like a big huge golfing event there. They also had like the biggest uh, horse f- horse racing in Formula One. I think yeah, been yeah, a few uh, times. Uh, uh, yeah, specifically yeah. Formula One was there. And not not only that, you have a rumor that Floyd Mayweather flew over there to talk to the Saudi Arabians about bringing <laughs> a Pac Man fight there. Wow, no. That's not necessarily true. He flew there because he wanted to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov there. Well, that's remember, uh, remember Khabib's father was tweeting that Floyd won't stop calling them, mm-hmm. and you know they're thinking about doing, but they're not sure. That's for Saudi Arabia. Well, e- either either way, either way, yeah. it's you got him going to Saudi Arabia, looking on getting some real estate for a fight. You know, I mean, this these conversations weren't happening four or five, six years ago. So, you know, honestly. I don't care what country it happens in. If, if, if somebody is providing entertainment and, a, and is paying a price for that entertainment, and I could you know benefit from it, I, I don't care where it's at. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean as long as the punches are thrown and and, and you're able to watch it, yeah, yeah. And everyone's safe, you know. But, yeah, but but the bottom line is the, the is, problem is is that you don't know if everything's on the up and up. The problem with a country like Saudi Arabia, who's recently been in the news for stuff. It's well beyond the realm of sports, right? Like what? The, the, the bottom, you know, like the murder of the journalist, for example, that gets well, traced I, back I, to, are to, are to the really crowd. Sure that, are we really sure that actually happened? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, all the indications are that should it should be enough. <laughs> so, yeah, all indications are that, you know, it was pretty bad, and even the Saudi government has admitted that he was killed. What they're not admitting is that the, the crown prince knew about it, and that's the only part of it. But they're like, yeah, we had a rogue guy who were killing, you know, and those guys may lose their lives over it mm-hmm. just to cover up for the prince if that's, if that's really the story that's out there. Yeah, there but the like point is, is now horrific. I've got Eddie Hearn over there negotiating. So Eddie Hearn's been over there with buddy, 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 buddy with these guys and stuff. How do I know... In a country where they run everything through the the leaders and the bosses, that he hasn't done enough work to say, you know, we're going to skip Anthony Joshua's drug test for this one. Hmm. You know, little things, just little well, things if, like that. If you, know, you that. if you don't think that's happening in Europe already, you're sadly mistaken. You no, know, I know, but the, now, now, but Europe was taken away from him because of Andy Ruiz's negotiating tactics. So, what false Andy Hearn would be to find another place where he can do that. And I'm just saying that he may have. Yeah, yeah. S- Saudi Arabia is actually welcoming the the tourism, and they're saying that it's it's going to start booming real, real soon. You want to know what comes with a ticket for one of these Formula One events, uh-huh. or you want to know what comes with it when you buy it? Uh-huh. A visa. They're giving you a visa right away a when you visa. Get, yeah. To come over there and 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 watch, they're giving them away to to come and watch these uh, watch so, these. Plays. So what benefit does a visa? This better? is this is what I've been hearing and what I've been listening to. So, but so all right. So like uh, Anthony Joshua and um, his opponent Andy, Andy Ruiz. Ruiz. Well, wait, did you hear what Tyson Fury's comments were the other day? He oh walked, yeah, he walked him back. He, essentially, he said that Andy Ruiz is not training for yeah. this fight and he's not in the gym. Well, he walked it back a little bit today. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure why he did because, honestly, Andy Ruiz is not training for this fight. Yeah, I don't think he is. You know, w- what, what is the date that's set for it? I think December 7th. Uh, he's still got plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah right no, now, there's plenty of time. Right right now, he's sitting on a high horse that he hasn't ever been on before. So, I mean, let him enjoy the moment. We'll see We'll see when it gets closer to the date on what the stories are. My prediction is is that is the best Andy Ruiz that we are ever going to see. Oh, ever. And this is ever. probably be the last time we see him on a, on a major, major fight. Ah, he might get one more. 
He's got Fury, the name to Fury and Deontay Wilder, and then after yeah, that, it's may, over. maybe the loser of that. Yeah, then it's over. You know, the, yeah, yeah, and then it all depends on what happens. Might from get there. one or two more paydays after that. Yeah, and, and you'll know how serious he is if he ends up winning that fight. You know, that that fight after the Anthony Joshua. You know, that's actually a good way to put it. We won't know how Andy Ruiz is after the Joshua fight. We're gonna know how he is after his next fight. I can tell you, this is how I gauge. Because he might lose into obscurity. For, for sure, but you, you gauge somebody about who they surround themselves with. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a winner, you surround yourself with other winners. Mm -hmm. You're a hustler, you surround yourself with other hustlers. Who does Andy Ruiz surround himself with? The Latin King Street Game of Los Gang of Los Angeles. (laughs) It is. I mean, and it's not. That's not. That's not a secret. That's not speculation. Mm -hmm. Look at the colors of his robe. Look at look at you know the crown. You know the hidden crown on his on his you know logo. Mm -hmm. Look at the tattoos on his body. Look at the necklace he just bought. Mm -hmm. Look at. The people that go to interviews with him, mm-hmm. man, dude, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and, and listen, it's the fight game, you got to do whatever it is you can to survive. Mm-hmm. You know, these people generally don't come from, like, nice suburban houses. Yeah. You know, they, they come from, from areas that, you know, you and I have the privilege not to experience. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I truly mean that sincerely. Mm-hmm. But at some point, man, when you're a winner... You got to separate yourself from that. I'm not saying forget where you came from. Yeah, but you got to separate yourself from right. that. So, Miguel, out of those three, do you predict any upsets? Uh, you know, in, in many ways, uh, you know, the Luis Ortiz fight is being looked at that way I with agree. Deontay Wilder. That mm-hmm. that uh, that one is the one that many people are pinpointing there. Um, Joshua has opened a, a you know a three to one favorite over Andy Ruiz. I wonder, you know, if, if lightning will strike twice there. Yeah. The thing that you're not addressing, um, with all the correct criticism of Andy Ruiz and his handling of, you know, the post-fight uh, atmosphere there, but what we don't know is we don't know about Joshua and Joshua's makeup. So in many ways, we won't know about Joshua until after that fight as well. Mm-hmm. Just what kind of mindset he shows up in. Because it, at this point, it is going to be all in the mind. We know his body is his body, you know, the... He's a specimen. He's going to be doing what he's, you know, uh, he's going to be in good shape. He's, you know, he's a gold medalist, so he's he's got pedigree. He's got the mm-hmm. technique and stuff. It's really all in the mind. So we'll see how he comes in over this loss, you know. Um, and I, I think that's an interesting question that uh, may be being overlooked. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, well, you know, I think out of the three, if you had to pick, like, subtract every title, you know, uh, around anybody's waist, uh, if you had to pick the, the world champion out of those three, in your opinion, you know, without a, a belt making the significant determining, determination of your outcome, you got to go Tyson Fury. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to not say. Yeah, he never I, lost. He never lost a belt. I mean, he, he never lost a belt. But a, I, a Coke binge and, you know, a lot of fast food was mm-hmm. his downfall, maybe the bar as well. But at the end of the day, that bounce back fight against Deontay Wilder was incredibly impressive. And I think Deontay Wilder got a gift that night. Yeah. He got a gift that night. Yeah, well, look, he got knocked down twice. So, I mean, like, he got one a, of them was a slip. He got a gift uh, that know. night. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe we say that the rest of the conversation for another podcast. But it is what it is. And already, hey, they're already talking a rematch for, what, February 7, 2020? Or sometime in February 2020. So, I'm looking forward to that. Honestly, that's, that's funny. I mean, if you look at it, too, man, like, the way how... The people and the people, meaning ESPN, is surrounding Tyson Fury. They're trying to. He's staying in the news. He's staying in the news because of ESPN. And one, his fights are on American soil. You yeah. know that's that's what's happening. So I mean, like they're 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 trying to ride his popularity as high as possible, in anticipating for a huge fight coming up in February, versus Fury. Yeah, or, it, versus uh, Wilder. Are they even releasing odds on the Fury Wilder rematch yet, Miguel? And I know, I mean, that's months in advance. I, I didn't see it today at the book I, I usually review. That's awesome. What do you What do you think it would be? So, you, you think? Yeah, uh, from your hit, Miguel, you've set odds before. Where, where would you set that? Let's Let's assume it goes on American. You know, soil. right off the right off the bat, if it's American, if it's on American soil, I would call it a, a pretty much a pick em fight, and then see where it goes from there. Would you go Fury's always going to have the people that come in. What What <laughs> what people don't notice here, and you know, all the criticism, you know, and, you know, Fury's a guy that uh, has been through a lot of trials and tribulations and stuff like that, so maybe he gets a buy, but the bottom line is, is all of this year, in 2019, 
you know, with the Tom Schwartz fight, and now uh, with this next fight coming up here, it's been Fury that's taken, as in, especially in terms of the odds, the easiest fights out of all of the big three, you know, in terms of um, Joshua, you know, Ruiz, I guess you can consider him a little bit of a cupcake, but the bottom line is on late notice, and Ruiz was a once-beaten guy, too. So, you know, I, I, I Ruiz definitely, I think, would have beaten Tom Schwartz, you know what I mean? So it's like it's hard to say that Fury's been fighting real competition. He's really just staying in the news and staying active and sort of not getting overly criticized for it. So um, I don't suspect that'll last if, that, if we don't have the fight delivered in February against Wilder, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, Miguel, what else is going on in boxing news right now? I know it's a little bit of a slow time because, like, uh, there's really not a lot of big fights coming up in the short term. I think the biggest one, I think, in the dock is going to be coming up in, what, September with Earl Spence Jr. and Sean Porter. Then after that, we're going into the fall. You got fall. J-Rock and you got... Uh, That's sort of at the end of the year. So yeah. you figure, I think, like... It's going to be a big December, I think. It'll be a big end of the year, and end I think it year, starts yeah. with the September fight with Errol Spence and Sean Porter. After that, it gets to be pretty solid. But there, there are a couple other ones in the between now and then, though, right, right, uh, right, Miguel? Well, I think you're kind of overlooking one card that uh, is going to be something that people definitely stop and pay attention to, and that's uh, Vasil Lomachenko taking on Luke Campbell. Oh, that's right. And, uh, that's you know, right. we got you got two Olympic gold medalists there, and, uh, you know, Lomachenko is the A-side of any fight he's in and, and, and news in and of himself. When, when is that, though? Is and, that, uh, you know, here he's going to England, England, so that's kind of a big one. When is that fight scheduled for? <clears throat> that's coming up here at the end of August, August 31st, and uh, that's scheduled for the O2 that's in London. So, right yeah, Campbell, it's uh, yeah, you know, kind of right around the corner. Right. And that's not that's not that that's, that opponent Campbell is no joke for Lomachenko. Well, he's got to take him very seriously. Is that the, at the big O2 or the small O2? No, this is the O2 Arena, not the uh, football stadium. Okay, the small mm-hmm. one. Yeah, the small okay, that's one, where then. they do the burn-knuckle boxing. Yeah, so it's boxing. a 20 thousand. Yeah, they yeah. do, they do burn-knuckle boxing there, and they're selling out. I, they got an event coming up uh, second week of September, and it's Tyler was it Tyler Goodjohn versus Sean George is the main event. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a gloved boxing fan, mm-hmm. I can't explain to you how like amped I am for that main event. Yeah. Both those guys are studs. T- uh, Tyler Goodjohn is... A natural bare knuckle boxer. Okay, go watch yourself some Sean George. The entire weight division is going to be on notice because Sean George. You saw a little bit of Tyler Goodjohn, and you go, "Oh my God, do you know who this guy is?" Yeah. The problem with bare knuckle boxing right now in Europe is they're giving us these main events, like they're they're literally it's like a child on Christmas. Every single one of these main events. And sometimes you got to let things build a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But Tyler Goodjohn and Sean George, which is coming up over at the O2, I, I, I can't friggin' wait to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I also seen, too, in the news that Errol Spence was calling out Manny Pacquiao, too, after, uh, after he beats, after he claims to beat um, Sean Porter. Wow, you know, people are looking at that payday. Yeah, that's all it is, though. That's all it <laughs> Could is. Could you blame him? No, no. I, I mean, hell, hey, you know what? I am going to publicly challenge Manny Pacquiao for a fight in the spring of 2020. You know what I mean? Throw my name in that hat, too. <laughs> no, and, and no VADA testing. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No VADA no, testing. No, I refuse to take any testing whatsoever. Yeah. So, yeah. But, not, um, not, not, even, not even the old test of the scales, huh? Or are you going to make 147? I, I'll, do, I'll do the best I can to make uh, 207. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, another name that I seen pop up in the news that I didn't know he was fighting recently, and it sort of blew my mind and actually gauged my interest very much. It's Tommy Morrison's son, Mackenzie Morrison. Okay. Have you, what have you, what sure, have you he's you, actually got two kids that are fighting. Okay. The, I think it's the older one. I think it's, I think it's, his name is Mackenzie, Mackenzie Morrison. Okay. And he, what do you know about him, Miguel? Cause I, I, dude, I seen a picture of him. I've got a side note on this. I, I've seen a picture of him. And I didn't even see the name. I'm like, that's a young Tommy Morrison. And then you see the, the name next to it. I'm like, holy bleep. That is Tommy Morrison. It's, I, it's identical. It's his son. Yeah, what do, yeah. What do you know about him, Miguel? Okay, we, we, uh, which son are you talking about? Trey or No, no, no. Mackenzie. No, Mackenzie, Mackenzie. I, I think okay. Mackenzie's got the one with the more potential, right? Okay, yeah. There, there's a couple of them. They're both boxing. So, you know, and they're, they're, when I... The last time I had caught up on that, them and their scene... 
they were both sort of, uh, you know, coming up and uh, up the ranks and hadn't done anything big. Let me uh, fill you back in, though. The, the problem with them, I think, is going to be, and a couple of them times, uh, you know, they fought under uh, a different last name and things like that as well. So, um, you know, James McKenzie Morrison is the full name of, 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 what, of the kid you're talking about. And, uh, you know, he's 29 years old at this point. So he's not a kid. He's 16 and 0. He's got a couple of draws. And, uh, you know, his father is such a controversial figure. And, you know, I don't know if there's many uglier ways to go out in boxing than the way Tommy Morrison did. And I, I, I feel bad because at one point, I, you know, he was a guy, a great white hope type, you know, mm-hmm. with a lot of potential and a big punch and, and uh, definitely a guy who was a player in the heavyweight division. Yeah. But, you know, when he tested positive for AIDS and then the whole, you know, rigmarole of a story afterwards where, you know, he continued to fight and was in denial and, you know, went to Japan to fight and, you know, four guys that knew he tested positive. I mean, it's just such a black eye on the sport that I think these kids kind of have something to overcome. In other words, they're not going to be in the, yeah, uh, and they've been doing that. They've been fighting on the, you know, um, on the B circuit, so to speak, as opposed to, you know, where a guy like Tommy Morrison, you might have thought his kids would start off, you know, maybe, you know, with a lot more interest than they've gotten. So, um, yeah, something to keep an eye on. You know, uh, a side note, Miguel, a few years ago, you and I went to the uh, Boxing Hall of Fame induction. And, you know, there's like a, a, like, a, like a boxing collector's like portion of it where they fill a high school gymnasium and there's so much boxing memorabilia there. Like, it's, it, it was difficult for me to, like, go from table to table because I was just, like, absorbing everything. And I saw a guy close out a Tommy Morrison autograph picture. And I just kept thinking to myself, as a single man, this is going to remind me to wear a condom. <laughs> so I, I have it, and I, I threw it in a frame. <laughs> yeah. I think I bought it for, like, 10 bucks. The guy, the guy had, like... 500 of them. <laughs> so, but, I mean, you know, the hope is that the kid can somehow reach, you know, the heights of his father, because at the end of the day, you know, his father was, like I said, a player in the heavyweight mm-hmm. division, and that's always good for, you know, for boxing and stuff, you know. So, um, but he's not, they're not there yet, and they, they haven't really been uh, put in a situation where they've been tested. They've been in situations where they're fighting guys they're favored against, and, yeah. and uh, you know that goes for both brothers. I, I, I just find like second generation, you know, boxers, professional boxers. I'm fascinated. Me by too, him. and that's why yeah. I've seen it. Like, holy cow, that's really cool to see. Yeah, especially like when you see third generation, fourth generation. Yeah. Like that's just, I yeah. mean, that's just it's genetically. Yeah, th- yeah th- 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 that's why I brought up. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. brought up if it was you know Joe Smith. You know what I mean? But it was like Tommy Morrison, his his kid, and he looks. Identical. Joe Smith knocked out Fonfara and Hopkins. <laughs> so slow down on Joe all Smith, right, all right, all unless right. it was just a generic name you're throwing out there. No, it was <laughs> Joseph Smith with an E at the end of it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> just just to, just to be clear too. Trey is also 29, so I, I'm not sure how that worked out. It looks like they may have different moms because uh, Trey fights under Trey uh, under Trey Lippy Morrison, mm. and he's also 16 and 0 with no draws, so it's just a pure 16 and 0. Yeah. But again, I go through the, I the competition level, I go through the opponents and stuff, and you know, more power to him. I mean, that's kind of you know an old school way of you know doing boxing is you build yourself up until you get noticed, and then. You know, you, you you go in there and you, you get your pay days, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, that may be the, the path of where, where we hear from both of these guys. But uh, Trey Lippy, he's fought under, he's the kid I was mentioning in the early part of that was, he's actually fought under Trey Lippy and not uh, use the Morrison name. Mm-hmm. Now, if they fought each other, do you think you would find it like on an undercard featuring Octor, Octomom and Tanya Harding Colin, battling each other? Paul Feldman's brother? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, well, unfortunately, with the Morrison saga, it does have that aspect of, carnival. you know, yeah. of, yeah, early 90s, you know, uh, too early for reality TV, but should have been a reality TV. You know, I, I don't know you know, how you qualify that time. But, that guy would have been but yeah, I, I think right. Tommy, Tommy anyway. brings the... I think that's one of the reasons probably Trey Lippy doesn't use the Morrison name is it brings a certain amount of circus with it. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I agree. You know, it is what it is. Well, that's our boxing update. You know, not much going on, but we got a little bit out. 
about what it is we know, and we're going to be moving forward uh, to mixed martial arts in the next podcast. So thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.